Right, so um, one of the thematic areas that was explored today was um, preventative action. And as we said yesterday, a lot of the work that the GPAC Pet Work does is um, collaboration, particularly when you're looking at the sort of stories that people come out, but also connecting with the community to identify um, conflict indicators so that you can do something about a conflict before it actually stops. So when, you know, the you know how when you're about to get sick and you can feel like a weird sort of niggle in your throat mm -hmm. and then that's when you start to increase your citrus intake, intake so you don't get any sicker yes. so it's similar with this the people in the community start saying oh no there's um there's this problem mm -hmm. so you immediately address the problem before it becomes you know a root issue of something else yes and also accessing channels to trigger actions so being rather Prevent, taking preventative actions mm. to avoid the whole bloodshed or massive conflicts. Mm. Yeah, so it's all about preventative measures and taking preventative actions. So um, the second area is dialogue and mediation. And that's a fairly new area for the Pacific mm. because um, it is about engaging at uh, national and regional levels and there isn't that much around it. Yes, and also it's about fostering best practices so it's all around the dialogue at the moment even then with dialogue we think most of the time people have these assumptions or generalization that CSO it's easy to dialogue but then mm. even then it's difficult for CSOs to dialogue um, earlier on Sharon in the uh, afternoon session which by the way if you have been following the segments she is the executive director of family in pacific and also the gender liaison for gpac pacific yeah um so she mentioned earlier how it's important for cso's to have dialogue and especially if they were to identify frsc as one of the boundary partners so having the dialogue with them to create visibility for the cso's but it's also not just about the engagement of cso's yes. when it comes to dialogue and mediation um, something that was mentioned by a lot of the gang, uh, particularly from Tonga mm -hmm. and Bougainville, was that people in general don't know how to engage with the kind mm -hmm. of mechanisms that can help them solve these issues. Yeah, and break that down um, by all our different needs and focuses of, especially a lot of people in the Pacific do not know where to go to mm -hmm. regarding an issue that they have. I mean, sometimes even I do work to admit that I not everything that I know so mm -hmm. sometimes I have that issue of where to go and find out resources or organizations that I need to go to for help. Um, yeah so it's particularly having and removing these assumptions that everyone knows everything mm. especially people in the community so yeah. you have to you know have that language if you were to read messages modify it a bit your approach and mm. stuff because not everyone knows the policy term or yeah. the language that you speak at work or home so it's different so it's having to always contextualize so you can think globally but act locally yeah one of the other focus areas that we looked at today was peace and security and particularly yeah. around not just celebrating the fact that there yeah. is now a regional action plan uh, for women peace and security which was very important breakthrough and it took about six years of work mm -hmm. um, it's also about taking that forward uh, and and also in that sense there's a incorporating a whole lot of peace education, which is the final thematic area that GPAC focuses on. There's not so much work around that, I guess, in Fiji, mm -hmm. but um, I think that's where you're bridging from, you know, a CSO mm -hmm. engagement to the people. It's about fostering understanding and also mm -hmm. helping bridge the um, information gap yes. so that there is um, more peace. Yeah, and also it's about... Um since there's a lot of cross-cutting issues, mm. um, using media engagement as, yeah. a, as a tool for advocacy. Sometimes these are things that we don't realize, that we have all these sort of, we, have in, we even have social media. So mm. using simple things such as Facebook or even YouTube or your blog site um, for advocacy. Like for us, family, uh, we use the community radio, so we use media as a main uh, source of uh, advocacy too along with other community radio times and mm. etc cetera, etc cetera. so yes so that that in itself is a strategy for peace building yes, because you're trying to find different ways of you know because the whole thing is mm. 
it, it's about being disassociated and it's also about being um, misinformed about certain things. So in a way you're disempowered in acting. And therefore, um, I guess that in itself, mm -hmm. the peace education, it comes along by giving people information about mm -hmm. how to use channels in a way. And um, so yep. I guess that's a lot of what the work that the, uh, the different GPAC, RSG mm -hmm. uh, partners do. They do a lot around uh, using media mm -hmm. initiatives. But it's really difficult sometimes, particularly engaging with um, the mainstream media. And while what is considered mainstream and what reaches mm -hmm. the most people is now turning to be social media, not for one really has to make sure that you're not forgetting that, particularly in the Pacific, mm -hmm. literacy levels are low. People's yes. access to electricity, yeah. let alone a computer, yeah. it's really, really low. So, you know, you have to find what's mm. the most appropriate form of media for these individuals because they're the ones who are the most vulnerable. Mm. So that's, in a way, one of the biggest challenges in the Pacific is reaching these people that are so disconnected mm. from various forms of ICTs. Yes, Shan, I have to agree with you that because you can't really package everything into a one-size-fits-all yeah. category and just assume that everyone here can get it. Yeah. You have computer in your places. You can't really mm. do that here, especially for us in the Pacific. Yeah. Um, and not to mention the intergenerational mm. approach when we are building movements. Um, lucky for our involvement, Shan, we are uh, yeah. very fortunate young women. Um, like earlier on, uh, Bianca and even Helen, uh, Rhoda from PNG, and even across, I think it's like generally, not generally, but like similar and some of the common issues for us youths in the Pacific, particularly in that of PNG where Rhoda was, uh, she had mentioned earlier on and also Bianca, um, from when the uh, conflicts had started, the youths that are now holding the weapons, mm -hmm. back then they were like really young, <coughs> excuse me. They were like probably in their primary or high school and then now they are like matured youths, mm. 25, 30. And so they have no other choice but then to hold on to weapons because that's how they want to voice their opinion. They feel yeah. that that's how they need to address the issue. I guess you that, mentioned yeah. that yesterday, particularly yeah. around these are the people that are growing into sort of processes and that's the only way that they know. That they know and exactly. it's most unfortunate that's yeah. the only way that they know. Mm. And that's, I guess, why intergenerational dialogue and, and yes. working is really important. And it's not just within our own Pacific mm. societies, but across the board. Because it is a learning and sharing experience. Because we as the young people are the ones who will mm. eventually be in charge. And yes. because education in that way plays a really big role, you need mm. to know what you're talking about. Mm. And as we keep saying, exactly. we've been saying all this week, context yeah. is so important. You need to know where you're coming from, yeah. knowing your history. Because when you're building upon things that were probably there already, then that in a way, mm -hmm. it supports the work that you're doing. So I guess yeah. what we've been lucky is that we're, mm -hmm. we're talking to, we are basically the third generation of peace exactly, builders yes. and we can mm -hmm. be really happy about that. Mm -hmm. But we also need to make sure that while we're, we're saying, you know, we're mm -hmm. coming into this, we need to really make sure that we're building on the foundations, not tearing them down. Yes. Un unless those foundations are counterproductive, because as we can admit, there are a whole lot of mm. cultural things that are really detrimental. I mean, yeah. one of uh, the GPAC partners who came in, her, her husband recently passed away. Yes. And what people use as a cultural practice is to take practically everything in, in their house. house. They literally strip their houses of belongings, took the utensils, took their everything, their mattresses. mattresses. They had nothing to sleep on. Literally nothing. So in a way, culture does hinder us, and we have to acknowledge that it will change, and we exactly. hope that it will change for the better. Yeah. And that's the important thing about mm -hmm. being a young person. You know, you can acknowledge that, yes, this is a cultural practice, but this is not a cultural practice I want to continue for my children. Mm -hmm. I mean, the last thing you want when you've lost a loved one is to have people literally mob your house and take all of your things mm. it's it's very odd yes Shan. i guess that's something that we all have to take in mind um mm. i mean like for us younger generation and also the older ones and also the ones that are coming now uh the change is constant it it's in yeah. inevitable it's something that you just can't control so you have to go with the time working 
we mentioned it yesterday working in the current climate and mm. all then so forth and i guess also it depends on i mean anyone can have an intergenerational dialogue but then it's about communication making sure mm. that it's effective yeah. and interactive where they where it's a two-way street mm. receiving both the end receiver and the one who's uh, relaying the message mm. that it's effective so yeah so there's that aspect of respect, but also that aspect of learning, and yeah. particularly, as you said, on both, parts. on both parts. And I guess that is a lot of the issues. Cultural identity yes. is a really big issue in the Pacific. Mm -hmm. And while we have a small island developing states, particularly when yeah. you have Micronesia, who are basically losing the land that they live on, exactly. and so for them, when they have to mm -hmm. find other places to live, it'll be kind of difficult not just for the younger people mm. to adapt because yeah. they will but for the younger people to lose Everything. you know what would have been their cultural identity and the older people trying yeah. to cope with that so like we said it's a lot of issues so they're so intertwined and so interconnected yeah. that you know it can't just be a one issue year like we said yes, yesterday, yesterday while yeah. states have their focuses and it seems to change every year that doesn't make the issues go away while they put yes. it on the back burner yeah. and you know if you don't look at what's on the back burner after a while it's going to boil it's over gonna, or yeah, set something on fire, fire. so or actually it just explode eventually yeah, you know so you know that that's what we really want to do you need yeah. to make sure that you're addressing everything on the stove metaphorically yeah. Yes. because that's really hard to do in real life mm. but you're making sure that you're keeping a mind like keeping an eye on everything and that's why it's so important to have everyone involved in these kinds of processes yes, that's and that's true. that's the kind of democracy that we feel is really important to foster having everyone involved so that you yeah. know the issues that are the most important get addressed by the people so that the people feel at peace exactly. because that's what yeah. we really want yeah, um, and on the line of having been inclusive, yeah. um, just earlier on this afternoon, um, so they were talking about the LGBTI communities, yeah. how about how involving them, mm -hmm. I mean, bec because um, I think uh, Sima, she's also on the board of Femming and she's also the acting coordinator currently for, for Women's, Women's Action, Action for Change, Change. how she mentioned that some of the um, this uh, network, Survivor Advocacy Network, how some of uh, the participants went to the Women's Forum, but they didn't really feel like they could express themselves. So um, that's, as we earlier mentioned, mm -hmm. that the approach and everything needs to be right down, tailored according to the participants or mm -hmm. the individual's needs. So it's when you only can do that, yeah. then you are able to practice that, I guess, really democracy yeah. and also being inclusive and um, going according to the needs and focus of the and while, participants. And while that's really difficult, it's also really important. Yes, And one of the difficult. things that you have to keep in mind is that while we are trying to cater to yes, everyone, everyone. There, democracy is also about a compromise. It's not about mm, everyone yes, agreeing yeah. on something. It's about saying, yes, we understand that yes. this might be a little bit out of your comfort zone, mm. but as we said mm. earlier in the week, peace builders aren't people who stay in their comfort zone. They aren't no. the people who say the fluffy, duffy, happy stuff. No. You have to say what makes people mm. uncomfortable sometimes because they're ashamed to admit that it's a problem. Exactly. And peace is not just about keeping quiet yeah. and coming home, oh yes, I'm happy. You know, oh, we I'll agreed the on these things. many things yes, today. I'll While one of them might have been genocide, exactly. we agreed on it. So, you know, it's it's, it's really it's difficult peace. to find people who, who will really understand exactly. the word peace. Yeah. So it's peace is, I guess it's about agreeing to disagree and yeah. compromising and having to particularly take in everyone's uh, mm. opinions and what in a more constructive way yeah and then agree to what's the best the best so, so thank you very much for tuning in to the sean and tomorrow, tomorrow show. show uh we have two more days left after yes. today and uh we'll also be having a special episode particularly yes. about uh what is gpac so in case you get a little bit confused along the way uh you can be yeah. directed to their website It'll be linked in the uh, description for this video, and it has been for the other two. And uh, so, you know, it's really important, we think, that this message needs to get out. Because, yes. like we said, it's yep. a concern of everybody, and peace is everybody's business. business. So thank you very much. Uh, stay tuned to the Sean and Tamara show. We'll be back with more soon.